friends welcome to the fourth lecture in module 2 on the online course title HSC practices in offshore in petroleum engineering. In this fourth lecture we are going to discuss about some of the important HSC guidelines which need to be followed in oil and gas sector. In the last lecture we discussed about two case studies very briefly we tried to arrive at the important violations which we could observe from the case studies. The second one was quite interesting related to the oil spill which was from the Exxon Valdez oil spill which is an important lesson that how such hazardous events can be prevented and what could be the major source from which this instance would have happened. So, it is very important to know that all the offshore oil and production platform should be checked for the oil spillage in water bodies. So, they should be checked for oil spill in the water bodies. One has to ensure sufficient control measures to basically avoid such situation because after the Exxon Valdez oil spill event it has become one of the important highlighting situation for all the regulatory agencies in the world to ensure some control measures which could look upon the avoidance of such oil spill or at least at least minimize the hazardous conditions because we already know from the first module lectures what are all the hazardous conditions which can cause serious consequences to the environment from the oil spill essentially. So, this was discussed and case study was presented in detail in Srinivasan Chandrasekharan 2011 A and B in the set of references given in the website of Infital course of HSC practices. Now, let us come down to essentially writing the list of objectives of HSC, what an HSC should ensure. So, one can say the overall objective is to describe a process by which the clients can select the contractors and award contract. with a view to improve the client contractor relationship while ensuring safety in all stages of operation. So, essentially HSC is focused around managing the process and production industry keeping in view safety as top priority. Very interestingly HSC management systems do not elaborate on the security and social responsibility.
Of course, they are integral elements of the HSA system, but they are not in detail elaborated, especially in HSC management systems. So, the active and ongoing participation by the client contractor and the subcontractors are essential to achieve the goal of effective HSE management. Let us see what are the aims. <coughs> the foremost aim is to improve the performance while assuring safety. It provides effective management of HSC in the contract environment. It facilitates interface of the contractor's activity with those of the client. It also integrally connect, integrates contractors, subcontractors and claims in one group under all the activities of this group. So, HSC guidelines are generally framed by keeping in the objectives and aims as we just now discussed. So, it should enable the contractor, the subcontractor and the claim as a one group so that all HSC guidelines are framed in such a manner that the process is clear between the integrated systems of this management which are nothing but the contractors, subcontractors and the client group. So, that keeping the primary objective as safety assurance in mind. Of course, we already know safety is designed in such a manner that it not only enables protection of human being or personnel working on board but also the equipments and the environment in the society all as one brace. So, HSE guideline is a standard document which does not replace a necessary professional judgment. Please understand this. The professional judgment which arise from the experience need to be anyway followed. In addition, these guidelines can be also followed so that put together there is an effective safety assurance happening. So, they are <coughs> recommendations to the specific contracting strategy in general these guidelines are not intended to take precedence over a host country's legal or other requirements that's very important so these guidelines do not supersede the legal requirements of the local agency or the body. So, 
ஸ்ரீனிவாசன் சந்திரசேகரன் டூ தௌசண்ட் லெவன் இ Let us look at the scope of HSC guidelines in detail. HSC guidelines provide a framework for developing and managing contracts. in offshore industry we all agree that while hsc standards are very important these guidelines do not cover many vital aspects of contract process that's very important these guidelines do not cover many vital aspects of the contract process as is it is focused essentially on safety assurance in the contracting management system or the contracting strategy they prescribe various phases of the contracting process keeping in focus the responsibilities of of all the players in the contracting system begins with planning and ends with evaluation of the contract process it begins with planning and ends with evaluation of the contract process let us ask a question how to emphasize need for safety or what is the need for safety who does this actually employers should establish teams so the initiative is essentially from the clients or from the employers should establish teams to improve monitor manage safety practices or issues what are they for example quality assurance so quality assurance will lead to control or guide contractors to practice good safety norms while contract is in progress so it ensures quality in terms of progress with without compromising safety employees also have a role in safety they are empowered
with the freedom to stop the entire production if they become aware of any problem affecting the quality of production or system management. So, if they even if they notice there are some violations, there are some deviations because of the faulty maintenance of the equipment. So, there is a quality challenge in terms of safety assurance or there are some negligence from the management side in practicing safety or in implementing the recommendations given by the employees to ensure safety, employees individually have a right to stop the whole production line without compromising safety. That is one of the important rules played by the employees in terms of safety assurance. So, very interestingly, this is a very common industrial practice. a very common industrial practice because this increases and ensures increased participation of safety assurance schemes and of course, it maintains quality in terms of system management as well. And more interestingly, such practices also reduce the cost line effectively. So, the production cost line is brought down effectively when the whole team compressing employees and the employers representatives work towards safety assurance program, which is essentially important emphasis on need for safety, which is in the scope of HSE guidelines. So, interestingly ladies and gentlemen, it is also a similar trend in practicing safety norms as well. Unfortunately, it is observed that only in many process industries employees are not involved in the safety process except that they are members of the safety committee. So, just becoming a member of a safety committee without implementing your rights, your rules and your obligations towards safety assurance is of no use. So, safety assurance will come only when the employees have prevalence in exercising their rights and responsibilities in terms of even stopping the production line if there are violations of safety, even though the violation essentially comes from the management side. So, that is a very important part which we have got to understand. It is also important to realize that if one desires to improve something for which the employees are responsible, then one should establish that it is an important component of the work day by getting it to a constituent of the business. So, the employers should also feel that participation of employees is not a disturbance in the safety program, but it is always going to bring down the production cost line because that is a very important industrial practice which is prevalent in many developing countries in the world today. Therefore, friends by involving the employees in the safety assurance program, what are the merits or advantages? So, by involving the employees as an important participant in the safety assurance program, what are the advantages? Employees get a sensation feeling of safety assurance 
as I said, safety is to be felt. Violation of safety should be also <coughs> felt by the employees who are the first level user. It also generates sensation of ownership in the employee's mind. That is very important because both of this could lead to a better production without compromising safety. That is a very important achievement and it is considered as an advantage. However, it is not recommended to punish an employee. If a safety principle is violated, but if the same is done by a supervisor or manager, if the same is done by a supervisor or a manager who is considered to be much more responsible, then it is necessary that a sufficient training must be given to the system to ensure safety practices in the work front. Therefore, an important task of the manager is to actually guarantee that the job is performed right and safe that is also important. Why we are focusing on managers? Because managers are always function of the safety problem. Since they are function of the problem, they should provide solutions. Okay, that is very obvious. The long lasting safety success cannot be assured unless the management team is a function of the safety effort taken by the organization. Therefore, goal of every organization should be to construct a safety culture through the employee engagement. Now, we are getting the employees involved in performing inspections, investigations and other procedures needs for safety and health program can be very easily and conveniently met. Employee safety therefore, can be maximized by making a safety culture through the increased consciousness that is very important. Safety should become a culture which need to be practiced. This should be achieved by increasing their consciousness. towards safety assurance. In particular, a skillful director of an oil company will make all efforts to improve and regularize the outcome of the business in its entity, although it is not unusual for a manager to excel in certain fields. Therefore, it is important friends to note that in the workplace there are 
several minor issues at the micro level that must be successfully managed for the company to succeed in the oil business. One of such issues should be hazard control. One must therefore establish quotas or reward individual achievements to recognize outstanding production effort of an individual employee while keeping safety in mind or encourage group of employees involve them in safety development programs and reward them suitably so that all will get motivated to follow a safety procedure without affecting the production line of the whole business. Alternatively, one can also ensure that in this rigorous task, safety is not compromised even unknowingly. So, as for safety and health is concerned, if the company contrives to manage them for the maximum success, then there is also a need to execute the program in the same manner. Safety managers are therefore experts who coordinate these efforts and keep the top management informed. Therefore, they become a very important segment in the whole exercise. So, HSC guidelines leading to policy and procedures should therefore include all possible signs and warnings to be issued on violation while doing this one should note there should be some measure of restraint also because you know in oil industry we have something called acceptable level of risk therefore the point of control in the whole exercise is only as effective as the level of enforcement. Where enforcement is weak, control and complaints are weak as well. So, when enforcement is weak, control and compliance are automatically weak. So, HSE guidelines should be strictly enforced that is important. The best suited example which is very simple in ensuring safety is the sign boards. So, simple example would be the sign boards which gives enough information about what to follow and what not to follow. They are fast information provider, they are simple to understand, they have no language barrier because they are graphic based as they are graphic based, they have no language barrier. They can be treated as a mass media communicator because it can reach many people instantaneously. In most cases, the signboards are not properly seen in the safety practices and therefore, accidents occur. Therefore, it is not the signboard which is important, it is a content which should provide basic information of the do's and do not in a very brief manner in the workplace. So, that it ensures and enforces safety while the production line is on keeping in mind the safety and health of both the employee and the employers at workplace. So, this will be helpful to prevent the employee's injury. 
sickness, etc. Organizing safety, we have already said that major accidents reported in oil and gas industries in the past are important sources to understand safety and consequences of safety violation. So, one foremost issue could be the accidents happened in the recent past that is one source based on which you can teach safety. The second could be near miss events which could become accidents should also be discussed. because near miss events actually focus on hazards whereas, accidents focus on risk. Risk aversion is an effective system no doubt about it, but risk is always addressed based upon the happened situation whereas, hazard is on the anticipated situation. So, one should look at the hazard management. So, near miss events are important source of information for organizing safety. So, lessons learned from the accidents through detailed diagnosis will be helpful in preventing the occurrence of similar event in the near future. It is true that important experiences gained from these events may be blanked out and the information may not be brought forward to the future generation if analysis of such accidents and near miss events are not reported. So, the major risk groups in offshore and oil industries essentially are certain segments which one must focus as education point of view. One could be the blowouts, other could be the hydrocarbon leaks, leaks from the installation. Next could be hydrocarbon leaves from the pipelines or risers. Next could be the structural failures. So, they are very important source of information which people should understand in education perspective to practice or implement or frame guidelines for HSC. So, let us focus some of them now to understand how and what lessons can be learned from these kind of events. Let us talk about echo fix blowout. happened on 23rd April 1977. A blowout has occurred in the steel jacket wellhead platform. During a work over on a production well, the blowout preventer was not in place, it was not installed and could not be reassembled on demand also. All the personnel on board were rescued without injuries through the supply vessel, but the accident resulted in oil spill. The consequence is no loss of human life that is good but resulted in oil spill of about 20,000 cubic meter of oil, which is very bad. The 
The well was then mechanically capped after 7 days after the event has occurred and the production was shut down for half a dozen weeks to allow the clean up operations. Although the Ecofisk bleed blowout did not call for any human death or material loss and was exclusively limited only to oil spill, but still it is an important lesson learned that capping of blowouts is possible although it requires time. This may be one of the important information in the design point of view which was then subsequently considered in the Yenchova blowout. In the design of Yenchova blowout preventer, so this was considered as an important condition that capping of wells should be available on demand so that even the oil spill occurs it should be able to control from the installation source. Yenchova blowout occurred on 16th August 1984. It occurred on the Brazilian fixed jacket platform. which is Yenchova 1. To give a just statistics to you, it was producing 40,000 barrels of oil a day, that is the production capacity and 15,000,000 cubic meter of gas. The total wells interconnected in this particular platform is about 10. Interestingly, the first fire was due to ignition of gas released during the drilling. during the drilling process. The fire then led to oil leakage which led to a knock. The fire due to the oil leakage <coughs> then subsequently led to the knock. This ensures that flame was completely blown out late the following day. So, the results in a big fire. Friends, look at the screen now. We have a captive picture of the Ecofisk blowout happened on 16th August 1984 at the Brazilian fixed offshore platform and the picture shows how firefighting was done parallelly from the vessels to control the fire and explosion occurred in the well. The platform's drilling equipment was completely gutted, but however, the structure of the platform remained intact. 36 people were killed. Consequences, structure remained intact, but drilling equipment completely gutted. 36 people on board were killed. in the accident. Of course, 270 sorry 207 people were survived by the lifeboats. So, people could save the maximum a few of them were not be able to save. The most vital lesson what we could learn from this could be use of conventional boats training in rescue operation etcetera are important which are useful for risk control.
especially in such emergency situations. Failure of the hooks in the lifeboat gained attention and that relate to improvement in the design. So, the lifeboats there were no there were interesting incidents of failure of hooks in the lifeboats. So, they were subsequently redesigned that was the feedback which we got as far as accident lessons are concerned. Lack of competence to control the realize the release mechanism led to stringent training of personal safety after this accident. So, people were not trained in evacuation process and rescue operations as a part of the safety program. So, after this blowout occurred then stringent training programs are implemented in oil and gas sector. So, everybody was intended to be trained rigorously on the rescue operations and management skills especially during such emergency. Friends, if you look at the screen now, you will see a captured picture of the Enchova blowout which occurred on 16th August 1984. So, in this lecture we learnt lessons from couple of accidents. We also said what are the important HSE guidelines, policies and principles, what are the aim, objective and scope of a good HSE program or safety program, why employees should be involved as an important participant in this program, what are the roles of employees and employers, what are the obligations of contractor, client and the subcontractor group in the whole safety assurance program and how one can diagnose the accident scenarios to understand better safety implementation as violated in those accidents. So, mostly and interestingly if you look at them organizing safety is very vital and important and therefore, should become a policy in terms of HSE management in the system itself. Thank you very much.